Hi guys, currently we are developing features for our combat gameplay, specifically the breaking mechanic where our monster breaks into pieces when we get hit with zero stability. And previously we already made part where we break our skeleton into pieces. We also made some new AI behaviors for our mercenaries. And today we will continue making this breaking mechanic go full circle by giving us the skeleton an ability to reconjure and transform the broken parts together once again. For those of you who are new here, I'm June and I'm making a reverse RPG game where you play as a wisp that can transform into different monster types to help you fight humans invading and exploiting resources from your island home. I'm making devlogs for the development progress of my game. If you want to follow the development of Wisplight, feel free to subscribe to get updated on new videos. Let's begin! On the previous breaking mechanic, we have some issues with our transform references. It seems that our skeleton when breaking does not have the right transform position and rotation when we call the breaking feature. Let's fix this one first before we proceed with the conjure mechanic. So to fix this issue, I made new game objects references and placed them on the root of the skeleton. Then I positioned each reference to mimic the transform position and rotation of the skeleton parts. This way, when the skeleton moves, the reference parts will move with it. Then I made these references as placeholders for the position of the parts and will get the transform position and rotation of the parts when we break. With this fix applied, we now have a smooth transition from any animation made by our model to our broken parts game object. Let's test it in action. As you can see, the last position of our skeleton model when attacking the guard is the reference for the position of the broken parts game object to spawn into. This makes the transition way better than the previous breaking mechanic. Let's test it again. It looks great. Next, as you can see, the broken parts are not really visible when it's on the ground. We want to make the broken pieces more visible from afar so that the player will see where to pick up the broken pieces. You can do this by adding some smoke particles on the broken parts. Now let's test it. As we break, you can see the new smoke particles emit from the broken parts and we can clearly see them from a distance. Now for the next feature, we want to make a gameplay mechanic where we can put the broken parts back together again. But first, we need to pick up the broken pieces and have it follow the wisp, so that we will have an opportunity to run away and position ourselves to a safer place when reconjuring the skeleton. Let's first start with colliders. We want to make detection systems that pops up a menu when we are near the broken parts. Then let's make a function that picks up each part and have it move towards the position of the wisp or player. Let's test it. It's working. Now let's try and pick the rest of the parts. Seems to work fine. Now let's make it look better by making the broken parts hoover around the wisp. This can easily be achieved by making an upward force to the game object and then disabling its gravity to make it float. We also want to keep the game object's mesh colliders so that when it collides with other objects in the area, it will rotate and still have its physics properties, making it more natural and dynamic when hitting objects in the scene. Let's also add a visual indicator that will tell us that we are picking up the parts. We can do this by making the wisp glow bright as we pick the broken pieces. With several tests and feedback from my friends, I decided to not individually pick the parts one by one since it's tedious and it takes a long time for us to pick all the parts. So I changed the code and made it so that we just have to pick one part then slowly the rest of the parts will follow. This will make the picking gameplay less tedious at the same time give us a gameplay where the wisp will position ourselves in a safer location while waiting for all the parts to be gathered before reconstructing the skeleton back. Now for the next part of this feature is to have the skeleton transform back to its original form. At first, I thought of using animations to transform the skeleton just like our custom animation when we conjured the skeleton for the first time, but this led to a lot of issues, so I decided to just use the existing game objects and have them move to the position and rotation of the reference objects. But this method has some issues. As you can see, some parts are bumping with each other and this will give issues later on with the accuracy of the position of the reference game object. So to fix this, we will disable the mesh colliders when we attempt to transform so that the parts will not bump with each other affecting position accuracy. 
Then, once the broken parts are near the reference parts position, we want the broken parts to disappear. Then, let's make the skeleton's mesh appear at the same time the broken parts disappear, making them transition smoothly. We also want to have the transition have a buffer distance to prevent the parts from not transitioning. We don't really want 100% accuracy on the position of the reference game object. This also gives us a snapping effect once the transition occurs. Now with this mechanic in place, we are again faced with another issue. Transforming the parts one by one looks cool, but it takes too much time for the parts to transition. So I decided to have all parts come together at the same time, making the transition much faster. I also made each part have a different speed that we can increase later on on our skill systems. This will make the transformation dependent on the skill that you can level up on your skill tree. The higher this skill is, the faster the broken parts will move to transition, and parts will have effects on how you move your skeleton. For instance, your skeleton can't attack if the sword is not transitioned, or if your shield is still following you around, you can't perform a guard or your shield bash skill. Likewise, if the armor you are wearing is not yet attached to you, you will have your fortitude and stability lowered. Now that the breaking mechanic is in full circle, let's make additional features to this mechanic. Let's make a feature that will drop the parts if you don't want them to follow us around. This mechanic is useful in cases if you don't want to proceed with the transformation of the skeleton. And if you want to transform to a different monster type or transform into a new fresh set of skeleton parts. Now with all the new features in place, let's test everything we've done so far. For testing purposes, we will have our skeleton have lower fortitude and stability levels to make it break easily. We also want to test the new AI behaviors for the mercenaries. And we also want to have a full mercenary party that is composed of three guards. One of them is the rear guard, two torchbearers, and an acolyte. This enemy group composition is too high level for our skeleton, but it is necessary for testing our breaking and reconjuring mechanic. As for our strategy, let's lure the mercenaries away from the acolyte only have the alkalite and the rear guard open. Let's watch out for rushing enemies though when we try to eliminate the acolyte. So as you can see, the new AI behaviors for the mercenaries will have them circle around you while a rear guard defends their acolyte. Let's head towards the acolyte and land some blows. Then let's run away from them since they will rush at us every time the acolyte is threatened. Our stability is low and we're at risk of breaking. So let's stop sprinting to speed up our stability recovery. Alright, let's hunt the Acolyte once again. Let's push away this guard first, then let's head to the Acolyte. We have very low stability and now we break. Let's pick all the pieces and move far away from the group. As you can see, the Mercenary Guards doesn't have any behavior yet if we are in Wisp form. That part is still under development. My plan is to have the mercenaries throw a grenade type of device at you that creates an area of effect damage at the Wisp the same time slowing the wisp speed and if your wisp fortitude goes to zero this will run the capture mechanic our game does not have a death mechanic but we will have a capture mechanic that will say that we are captured and this will lead to different scenarios where you will find ways to escape from the capital for example there's a capture scenario where we're captured in this forest and we are encased in a glass container and the only way to get out is to sacrifice one of our wisps making a huge explosion breaking the camp you're in along with the mercenaries near you eventually freeing you this is the most common way to escape capture, but you'll risk losing skill points by sacrificing one of your wisps. There are scenarios though that will prevent you from losing skill points, one of which is when you are captured near a settlement you have just captured. And if you have patrolling minions near the area of capture, there are scenarios where your minions will rescue you, breaking you from your glass prison. Or there are times that the mercenary group encounters patrolling minions and locks in battle eventually freeing you. We'll be developing these different scenarios in the future when we tackle the capture mechanic. So if you're interested, feel free to subscribe to get updated. Also, if you have any suggestions for a capture scenario that you want us to implement, feel free to comment down below. My goal is to make Wisplight a game that the community is involved in. A lot of your suggestions and feedback already are implemented in our game, so don't hesitate to share your ideas and suggestions down in the comments. Back to the demo. 
as you can see, we don't have fortitude already and we're supposed to be can no longer reconjure the skeleton. But since this part of the mechanic is not yet developed, let's just continue with the demo. Also, let me know what you think of our new reconjure mechanic. Do like the video if you think that the new mechanic fits our game. I also would like to thank my patrons for supporting me with the funding of our game. We currently have most of the assets needed to make a demo and currently, Erin, our 3D artist who just finished our tree creature, is currently modeling Cassandra. I'm also commissioning a UI artist to help me with our UI specifically for the skill tree icons. So if any of you guys are interested in helping with the project, send me an email with some of your samples and your rates. And for those of you guys who want to support development of Wisplite financially, I'll leave a link to our Patreon page down in the description. All the funds from Patreon and from our YouTube channel will go directly to the funding of Wisplite's assets. In our next devlog, we will start making and conceptualizing the foundations of our skill tree system. Till next time.